If you are new to shoeing and you're starting a business, when you go into a barn and you got nothing else to do the rest of the day, on that horse, do all four handmaids, whether he needs them or not. Number one, you're making a lot of racket. You're over here just and everybody that walks through that barn is like, what's going on? And get to grab that attention. Go burn them shoes on and fill that brand new barn full of smoke and let them people just, ah. <laughs> but it stands out. It's a big standout. You're not the norm. The norm guy is over there. You know, it sounds like he's hitting. He's hitting on this and it sounds like crap. Where the sound of the, a nice tied down anvil sounds a lot better. It sounds professional. The guy that's got the anvil on the tailgate is boom, boom, boom. You know, it's, it's an awful racket. Yeah. But if you, if you have control of your, of your hammer and your swing, it sounds like you're you know, that educated farrier. You know, a rhythm. You know, where the, the, the guy shooing cold is, is not in a rhythm. It's like bonk, bonk, bonk. And the guy making shoes, he starts getting that rhythm, and it sounds professional. It sounds like he's got a plan. He knows what he's doing simple stuff like that and uh, like I said just going in and making a bunch of smoke and stuff like that because the lady holding your horse has got to go back to work and, and she's got her nice <laughs> nice clothes on and she has to go back to work and people ask her about it why do you, you stink and then she stuck in her mind oh that's because I had my horse shot and then that creates well, who's your horseshoer that made you smell like this <laughs> You know, so now you're being talked about, and it's not even horseshoeing, you know, not even about the horse. It's about you. So, I mean, just a, it's the little things like that. I mean, so if you got a brand new barn and you want to make it, you want to make a, a showing, light the fire up and make some noise on the anvil and make some smoke and make a big ruckus. Let them know you're there. So, and that, because it's not the norm. Most guys are just over there just, you know, putting on cold shoes in there, in and out of there real quick. So just take that into consideration. Um, I do make a lot of shoes for horses. I probably probably make 40% of the shoes that I nail on. And uh, the reason I, the other, the, the higher number of keg shoes is I just don't have enough hours in the day to make all the shoes for every horse. I've got two brand new babies and, um, trying to keep a, a good strong business going you know but I try to at least at least three times a week make a pair of shoes at the horse for the horse um, just to stay fit with it you know it, it's it's like anything else if you don't practice it you lose it so it's always a constant um, if anything just get up 30 minutes early and go make a pair of plain stamp shoes before you leave that's easy, and throw them in the truck and nail them on later in the day. Um, if you do that, if you do that every day for a week, if you don't use those shoes, you just got five pairs of shoes. That's, I mean, bar stock is a lot cheaper than buying a, a, a shoe that's already been made. So it's one thing. That's one thing that might be a little cost. It's not a huge cost effective, but um, you're gaining knowledge at the same time. So knowledge is priceless going to just do some modifications and y'all can tell a lot by how I shape these shoes how I shoe horses a lot of you how many of you pick up an old shoe and and say oh this guy he can't trim a lot you know just just by the shape of the shoe you're like this guy can't trim a foot it dictates a lot just by y'all seeing how I shape a shoe y'all will y'all can kind of make your own assumptions how I shoe horses so that's another thing. Making horseshoes makes you a better horseshoer, and you don't even realize it. Just by striving for that, that shape in your head and trying to translate it into your hands through your tools, you're, you're educating yourself on the horse's foot and understanding the biomechanics of a horse's foot just by making horseshoes. You don't realize it until a couple years down the road, but you're like, man, making all them shoes made me a better trimmer. That doesn't make sense, but it does. It teaches you to see the shape of the foot better, you know, paying attention to detail. And a lot of horseshoeing is just paying attention to detail. So, real quick, I know this, I don't know if y'all know this, but I got two forges. And a lot of questions. Why do you have two forges? You can't work out of two forges at the same time. Well, no, I can't, but I can when I have a team. 
but I also use both of them when I'm by myself as well. This is huge on fuel saving. This little single burner forge doesn't use any fuel at all. This thing is a gas guzzler. But this gets hot, that doesn't get hot. So if I'm gonna clip up shoes, this is my new shoe forge, this is my reset forge. So when I do all resets, I'm in here. I'll go trim a pair of feet and I'll knock the nails out, stick them in here for just a few seconds, give them a few taps on the anvil and brush it off. Because I don't like to brush mud. It gets stuck in my brush. So if it's a muddy shoe and it's got it's a little damp, you know, the crap on there, I'll just stick it in there and heat it up and it, it takes the moisture out. And you do that and it falls off very easy. And then I just flip it over and brush the fullering out. So a lot of people are like, man, I guess all that dirt in your forge. I'm like, oh, it's all right. It'll blow out when you turn the gas on. So I've got a pair of Heinz. I'm gonna I'm gonna shape them up. I usually shape the shoe first, so the way I like it, and then I clip it last. And then, okay, so I've got I'm I've got the this hind shoe fully clipped, and I've got one clip on this one. I'm going for the last clip on the second shoe. Well, I don't want to put the 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 finished product back in this fire because it gets too hot. It's too hot to burn. That's basically in storage. It's too hot to burn. So I'll stick it in this one and it'll just it'll be dull red when this one is done clipped. When it's dull red, I'll shut this one off when that one's clipped. And I'll come to this one, it's dull red. I can stick a pretzel in it and go to the foot and it's not too hot. If I if I leave it in there, it comes out it's orange. And then I go put it on the foot and the foot flames up and I don't like flames when I'm burning. It burns the hair and you can't see what you're doing and it burns all the hair off your arms. And, um, but if I just stick it in here, it gets it dull red and then by the time I get to the horse, it's, it's like a black heat. So a lower temperature to fit in. You can see what you're doing. Um, I, I already had this fire when I got this truck bed. So I just incorporated what I have. I didn't, I didn't go buy these two forges with the plan of this, I already had this one. I just bought this one and added it. So, but it worked out really well. And I, I, if I was to do it again, I would definitely do it again. I would, I'll, I probably always keep a fuel efficient forge in the fire and I'll also keep a gas grizzler to get shoes hot fast. Time is money, so. I think if you can get to the, the place where you can get comfortable using any kind of tool, it's beneficial, you know. I can grab your hammer and pull a clip with it, or I can grab his hammer and pull a clip with it. Just doing it enough that you can get comfortable with any tool and get the same result. So I'm just going to chunk these down. Those are the ones that I compete with, the ones I'm the most accurate with. And I'll grab my truck tools just to show you that I can do it with either or. Real quick, instead of a center punch mark, I just use my hammer to mark the outside. And I just put a little ding on the inside web. I learned that trick from Austin Eats. I have to give credit where credit's due. Anytime I flatten a shoe, I go from inside toenail all the way to the heel and repeat the process on the other side. That way the shoe is cupped on the inside and I'm not burning sole. I only want to burn wall. So on the foot side, you're, you're going... On the foot side, the I'm half facing on the inside and then on the outside, I'm half facing the outside edge yeah. of the shoe.
the front end, if the horse is, is upright, or, if, or let's say if he's got a long toe and long sloping pasture, and I would either, if he's really, really low, and I would side clip. If he's just kind of medium, I quarter clip. And if he's upright, I'll toe clip. Same as a hind. On a hind, I only quarter clip or I toe clip. But on the fronts, I'll either side clip, quarter clip, or toe clip. 